Very interesting uh, feature segment here today for you folks, because more and more women are turning to freezing their eggs to safely extend uh, plans to have children later in life. At the NYU Langone Fertility Practice, egg freezing procedures jumped 41% uh, this summer versus last summer. Uh, and for more on that, I want to bring on our next guest here is Dr. James uh, Griffo, Program Director at NYU Langone Prelude Fertility Center and Chief Executive Physician at Inception Fertility. Uh, and Dr. Griffo, uh, I know that this is something that's been uh, growing over the last couple of years. It's something I've covered uh, in terms of the options out there, but 41% seems like a big jump. So what are you seeing in terms of the demand for these services? Is it more because uh, costs are coming down or maybe more companies are offering to front the cost of these procedures? Well, costs aren't coming down, but they haven't changed in our 15 years of doing this. We haven't changed the, the price for it, but uh, what's changed is insurance coverage has improved. Um, I think now that it's no longer experimental, which we lost that label in around 2010, um, and it's starting to catch on because now the first wave of patients are starting to have babies from it and we're seeing that it works. Um, we had published an original paper way back in early 2000, what was written in 2005, finally got published in 2010, and we showed that we get the same baby rate with frozen eggs as fresh IVF. So it's now caught on as, as an option. I think the pandemic has made a big impact as well because people had a lot of free time on their hands working at home. And I, I think they kind of squeezed it in. So I think that had a factor. I, a lot of insurance coverage is, is taking place. So there's a number of factors. And I think it's just uh, catching on because it's pretty clear as women delay their childbearing to older ages, they're going to have a harder time getting pregnant. So many women are doing this as a, a fertility preservation uh, attempt to protect their family future. Yeah, that's kind of the interesting thing to me, uh, because we talk about millennials waiting longer and longer to get married. Uh, I'm sure the next generation is going to be a similar phenomenon playing out here, longer to have kids. Um, but of course, there's still biological laws to consider there. Um, but on that front, it's it's kind of a catch-22, because you look for people who are uh, in their peak fertility years, shall we say, that would be prime candidates to actually freeze their eggs, but probably don't start thinking about that until it begins to be too late. So how is that maybe one of the issues the industry's had to face in trying to get that awareness out? So when we first started doing this, the first five years of it, we had our first baby from it July 4th, 2005, having spent four years in a mouse lab doing it on mice to make sure we could do it. And we did a free clinical trial in IVF patients and showed you get a 57% baby rate in a group of women who are mean age 31, which is the same results you get from IVF. Um, the initial patients who showed up were the older ones. So we just looked at a series of those patients, about 80 patients who had frozen eggs and then used them during 2005 to 2009. And about a third of them had babies, but that's the baby rate you'd expect from women who are mean age of 38 and a half. Um, so female age is strictly the most important aspect to success. Younger is better. Uh, there's probably an age where it's too young to freeze eggs because you may never need them. Um, but I, I think it's more important that women know about their options, learn the science, and then use that to make good decisions about how they live their reproductive lives because this system wasn't designed for today. This system was designed 2 million years ago when the average age at first birth was 13. You know, Homo sapiens had just taken over the earth. When I started in this field as a resident in 1984, the average age of first birth in the United States was 19. So it went up about six years in, in those two million years. Well, since then, last year in the United States, the average age of first birth was 26, which is another seven years and 20 years. And in New York, I can tell you, it's probably more like 36. So um, we've outgrown and out evolved this system and it doesn't work for today's modern life. So we're kind of the evolution of the lack of evolution. Yeah, and, and obviously you put all those things together, not perhaps surprising to see that 41% jump uh, in people taking you up on those services, but very interesting to see this all play out and that trend uh, continue here. Dr. James Griffo, Program Director at NYU Langoon Prelude Fertility Center. I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Very interesting stuff.